today's lesson that I'm presenting is Matthew, and it's verses uh, Matthew 11, 28 to 30. It says 25 on the projector. Um, it was uh, many years ago when I read these words in church. Um, I was just probably in my first month or so coming to church, and we happened to be going through the book of Matthew, and me and my wife were sitting at home. We were reading. We read this verse, and we looked at each other, and we just cried. It was a weight was lifted off our shoulders. We understood those words. We had been in the Bible long enough to understand what these words meant. I'm going to try to uh, draw some sort of meaning that I felt in my heart that day um, to see uh, what the message uh, meant to me. Um, in Psalm 103, verse 12, it says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Um, not too long ago when I started studying for this, I had borrowed a book from Pastor Don, and the book is uh, 10 Things Jesus Never Said and Why We Should Stop Believing Them by the author, author Davis Will. Just wanted to give credit to him that these are not my thoughts, but it inspired me, so I'm using them. Make no mistake about it, Jesus extended his holy invitation for rest to you. You are not the grand exception in history that God cannot or will not love. You have not gone so far that he can't or won't forgive you. When Jesus spoke this invitation, he didn't aim it just at the really good people, or the pretty people, or the really churchy people. He aimed it at the spiritually broken. If you find yourself nearing the end of your rope spiritually, if you find your stamina and the desire to earn God's favor rapidly waning, then you're exactly the person that Jesus was reaching out to. If you are not spiritually worn out or somehow think you have it all together on your own, just keep on going like you have been. Chances are brokenness will find you. But if you feel desperate before God and hopeless without him, then you're exactly where God wants you. Here's a little exercise the papers that I passed out. It's an opportunity to make Jesus' invitation personal. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary. The word all has a powerful meaning, showing that there are no limits about whom Jesus is willing to receive. Often, the broadness of, of the comment can still leave some people feeling left out are wondering if it really applies to them. So we're going to make this apply to us. On the papers that we passed out, it says, come to me with a blank. I'm going to ask that you, if you didn't get a paper, um, just to say your name when, it, when we read it. And take a minute to fill it out. 
So we're all going to do this at the same time. And when I read the words, we're going to say your name. And we're going to do this three times in a row to get that feeling and see if the Holy Spirit can fill us with the invitation being personal. Come to me, Tom, and I will give you rest. One more time. Come to me, Tom, and I will give you rest. Come to me, Tom, and I will give you rest. This is invitation is for every one of us. And I just wanted to make that point that it's to you. Whatever size of your burden, Jesus wants it. Whether the burdens are spiritual, physical, or emotional, Jesus wants it. In the song today, I saw, I read some words <clears throat> that I'm adding to this. Um, the words in the song said, My sin weighed upon your shoulders. And it's tying my lesson that I wrote. And I, I, when I finished this all, I realized that Jesus feels everything that we feel. So our weight is weighted on him. And he has already gone to the cross and done the work for us. So we do not want to have that weight upon Jesus. And I, when I saw that uh, in the song, it made me think of that. And he's, it's in another song we sang, the one who gave it all. He gave it all. And this invitation is to you to give it all that you've been carrying around. So Jesus is in the business of burden lifting. Part of his mission is to remove the load from our shoulders. It doesn't matter what the load is, how long you've been carrying it, or how ugly it might be. If it's weighing you down and taking your strength, Jesus wants it. This burden list I'm going to read it's just a few that I found in the book that I borrowed. Um, Ten things we should, that Jesus never said that we should forget. Um, if, you're, if you were abused as a child and you have, trust, trust, you have trouble trusting others and forgiving, Jesus wants your burden. You recently had an affair and have terribly wounded the people you love most in the world. Jesus wants your burden. Had you had a massive financial failure and had to file bankruptcy? Jesus wants your burden. You struggle with contentment? Jesus wants your burden. You often feel afraid? Jesus wants your burden. You're a worrier? Jesus wants your burden. You have always struggled with your weight? You don't feel attractive to others? Jesus wants your burden. You feel consumed by guilt? Jesus wants your burden. You hate your life and you wish you could start over. Jesus wants your burden. You battle depression. Jesus wants your burden. You're recovering from drug addiction or alcohol. Jesus wants your burden. You have a gambling addiction. Jesus wants your burden. You secretly look at pornography. Jesus wants your burden. You recently lost a job or are looking for one. Jesus wants your burden. You have never felt significant. You always feel like the world is passing you by. Jesus wants your burden. You are lonely. Jesus wants your burden. You feel like God is always angry with you. Jesus wants your burden. You don't think you can ever be good enough for God. Jesus wants your burden. There is no statute of limitations for the burdens Jesus is willing to take. It doesn't matter how long standing the burden or weighty or how distasteful. Whatever your burden is, Jesus wants it. We're going to be filling out the other paper uh, with your burdens. And at the end, 
of today's um, gospel meeting, we'll we will be passing. We'll pass that basket in the back. You'll take your burdens and you'll throw them in the garbage. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. I wasn't sure if Joel was able to find today. I had a, a yoke that I wanted to put up on the screen. That's a double yoke. That yoke is custom made for you and Jesus. That was a long list of burdens that I gave. And my question was, what burdens are you yoked to? We are full of burdens weighing us down. These burdens begin to build up like trash. We start to cling to them, feeling as we need them. They become part of us. They, dis they start to define who we are. Without realizing it, we become slouched over and the weight of the building burdens. You imagine with that yoke, try, the, the yoke that I see for us is a single yoke. We're trying to do it all alone. And last night when I was talking to my wife, I began to realize we're not put in this world to do it alone. Jesus Christ and God are there to do it with us. They're asking us in this invitation to come. And in that, you can see the weight would be lifted off of you. We're being yoked together with Jesus in this invitation. The Lord Jesus is inviting us to get yoked together with him. Take my yoke upon you. There are plenty of yokes. What are you yoked to? Jesus is offering you to exchange yokes, going from a single yoke to the double yoke. To all, he invites. The yoke he offers is built for two. It's custom fit to you. Yoke to me, he says. Make me Lord and Savior of your life. He's inviting you. Take my yoke. Let me set you free. Jesus feels what we feel. He feels the weight. Get yoked with Jesus. His yoke is a spiritual yoke. There is no weight. His yoke is easy. He will walk with you. When I was learning about these yokes, um, I had to come to remember that the farmer has to take the yoke off the oxen every night. And the same way, we have to remember to be yoked with Jesus every day. It's, a, uh, it's an everlasting thing to be yoked together with him. But we have to remember to put it back on. When he says, learn from me, he's offering that it will change your life. You will find rest for your souls. When you are in fellowship with Jesus, you are yoked together with him. He will never leave you nor forsake you. It's a relationship that we're building by being yoked together with Jesus. It's a relationship with a king. He promises to provide rest for your souls. Surrender to Jesus. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's the load bearer. 
Let your hearts not be troubled. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Get under his yoke with me. Yoke with Jesus and your life will change. Watch what he will do in your life. The woman flops down on the bench and drops her trash bag between her feet. With elbows on knees and cheeks in hands, she stares at the sidewalk. Everything aches. Her shoulder is stiff and her hands raw, all because of the sack. Oh, to be rid of this garbage. Her memories of life without the bag of trash are fuzzy. As a child, maybe? She doesn't know for sure. She never looks at her trash. It repulses her, so she keeps the sack closed. What else can she do? Give it to someone? All have their own. Here comes an old man, face ravined with wrinkles, trash sack hitting the back of his legs as he walks. He attempts a smile. What weight could he be carrying, she wonders. Regrets. She turns to see who spoke. Beside her on the bench sits a man, bright, kind eyes. Like hers, his jeans are mud-stained. Unlike hers, his shoulders are straight. She looks around for his trash, but doesn't see it. He watches the old man disappear as he explains. As a young father, he worked many hours and neglected his family. His children don't love him. His sack is full, full of regrets. And yours is shame. His voice is gentle, compassionate. Too many hours in the wrong arms, last year, last night, shame. She stiffens, steeling herself against the scorn she has learned to expect. She awaits his judgment, but it never comes. His voice is warm and his question honest. Will you give me your trash? Her head draws back. What can he mean? Give it to me. Tomorrow, will you bring it? He touches her cheek and stands. Friday the landfill. Long after he leaves, she sits, replaying the scene. His voice lingers, his invitation hovers. How could he know what he knew and still be so kind? It's Friday. With hope just barely outweighing hopelessness, she heads toward the edge of town. Others are walking in the same direction. A teenage girl just ahead. The woman hurries to catch up. The girl volunteers an answer before the question is asked. Rage, rage at my parents. I'm tired of anger. He said he'd take it, motioning to her sack. I'm going to give it to him. The woman nods, and the two walk together. As they near the landfill, the line is long. All wait in silence, stunned by what they hear, a scream a pain-pierced roar that hangs in the air for moments, interrupted by a groan, then the scream again. His. He kneels before each, gesturing toward the sack, offering a request, then a prayer. May I have it, and may you never feel it again. Then he bows his head and lifts the sack, emptying its contents upon himself, the shame, the anger, the regret. He feels what they felt. Upon her turn, the woman hesitates. His eyes compel her to step forward. He reaches for her trash. You can't live with this, he explains. You weren't made to. He empties her shame on his shoulders, looks toward heaven with tear-flooded eyes and screams, I'm sorry. He sobs as she has sobbed into her pillow a hundred nights. That's when she realizes that his cry is hers, her shame, his. For the first step in a long nighttime, she has no trash to carry. With the others, she watches as he is buried under a mound of misery. For some time, he moans. Then nothing, just silence. The people wonder who this man is and what he has done. They feel odd loitering near the heap, but even stranger to think of leaving. 
So they stay huddled around fires and metal drums through the night into the next day. Darkness comes again. Some doze. They wait one night and then another. On the morning of the third day, they almost miss the moment. It is the young girl who sees it, the girl with the rage. She doesn't trust her eyes at first. When she looks again, she knows. Her words are soft. He's standing, then louder. He's standing, all turn. They see him, bathed in morning light, standing. Standing, indeed. Jesus appeals to us to take to him everything that burdens us and weighs us down, our sin, our trash. We were designed to live free, not to live with sin. We try to do it for a time, but then realize the burden is just too heavy. The weight of sins, failures, and worries, it's just too much for one person to carry alone. Jesus wants them all. And it's time to take your bags to the street. It's Friday morning, trash day. Just give your trash to him. Simply pray, dear Jesus, for too long I've been carrying around all the burden of my sin and all that accompanies it, sacks of shame, worry, pain, resentment, and failure. I've tried to live with the guilt and hurt, but they've grown too heavy. I ache, I grieve, I feel crushed. I realize that freedom begins by confessing my sin and, and giving it to you. You release me from my burden and take it to the cross. And now it's gone forever. Thank you for removing the garbage of my life. No longer is my life the same old story. Now I have a new beginning and I am free because it is all in your hands. Amen. So the question is, um, how do we get in that yoke of Jesus? And with Jesus, we have to trust in the Lord and come and lay our burdens down at his feet. In the morning when I rise, in the when I Just kidding. 